something that we have not done in a very long time. Now, I'm trying out a new lens tonight. We'll see how the focus and everything works. It is a uh, Canon 50 millimeter. It's the Nifty 50. I got it used. Um, I'm actually about eight feet in front of the camera right now, <laughs> and uh, actually looks pretty close. So with the with the adapter to go from the regular Canon lenses, <clears throat> the the EF mount to the lenses that actually fit the mirrorless cameras. It makes that um, focal point a lot farther, so it's actually more like an 80 millimeter lens. Not to bore you with details, but so I, I haven't done a talking video in a long time. Now, this is pretty much a straight up talking video. We are going to do a little bit of sawmill maintenance, but I thought maybe now would be a good time now we're getting into the milling again uh, to maybe discuss some of the pros and cons of owning your own band sawmill, the cost of owning your own band sawmill, and actually what goes into owning one. So, if you don't like a video where a guy's just talking at you, turn the damn video off before you start leaving your snarky, rude comments because, I, well, it's just the way it is. So this is one of those videos. If you're interested in other things that we do here, there is plenty of videos of actually doing. But once in a while, it's a good time to get an informational one out there, get rid of all the BS and the fancy camera work and all that good stuff. So anyway, let's go. So, pros of owning your own bandsaw mill. Pro number one, any log you want, just about if you're willing to muckle it into your truck or a trailer or anything like that, you can bring it home and saw it up. A lot of times you can get free lumber that way, and uh, it's nice just to be able to saw, zip one up anytime you want. So that's a big pro. A lot of woodworkers out there, there's a lot of woodworkers that watch this channel, I like my woodworking too. And for a lot of us, it's pretty expensive to go and buy your own lumber if you like to use nice lumbers. If you want to do more than just pine, things like that, it can get very expensive. Now, it depends on how much woodworking you do is going to determine on how quickly you are able to pay your mill off with the savings. As said before, this is a Hudson, the uh, HFE 30. This is the Homesteader version. It's kind of a mid-range sawmill. It's a totally manual mill, so there's no power feed, no none of that. But, like I've said in probably a hundred videos, the sawmill is six grand out the door. It can do a 32-inch cut total. It can take a three-foot diameter log. I have 28 feet of track with it, and I bought 15 extra blades with it. Out the door, it was six grand. The con of this mill it's not a portable mill. I can build a trailer for it, and we probably will at some time, at some point, make it a portable mill. But for right now, that's just not what it is. So that's kind of the con. This is on this mill. Now, there's plenty of trailer options out there for many different mills, many different manufacturers. Uh, another pro of owning your own sawmill. It's just, you could dictate how your lumber turns out. If you want some quarter sawn lumber out of a log and things like that, you can do that quite easily with your own mill. If you try to buy wood like that, say from a sawyer who's inexperienced, or sometimes it's hard to find that specialty stuff you want. Sometimes the market for big crotch pieces and stuff like that for tabletops and whatnot, you're going to have to pay an arm and a leg to get a hold of those things. Whereas if you have your own mill, you can get your own out of whatever logs people are getting rid of. So there's a couple of pros. The cons. Cons of owning one of these things. It's labor intensive if you have a manual mill. <clears throat> it can be labor intensive if you have an automated mill. You do have to still offload slabs and move them somehow. So con is probably for me is needing a tractor a lot of times to load the mill. Now you guys watch this channel a while. You see we get around that quite a bit because a lot of times our tractors are tied up in the hay field. So Sometimes you just don't have a tractor at your disposal, so you got to get creative. It's nice about this mill is it sits on the ground, so that makes it a lot easier for me to load it manually without the use of a tractor. Now, I, I don't load a lot of 20-foot logs on here without the tractor, but I have done it before. I know there's some past videos of that. but um, So sometimes that can be a con of owning your own mill, whereas if you're using, say, an Alaskan-style mill, you could take that chainsaw and that Alaskan mill and whatever your frame is to get your first cut, you can take it right up to the log, sitting in the woods, doesn't matter where it is, you can mill that thing in the lumber of your own. So that's kind of a, uh, a pro for the Alaskan mill. 
Now the other con is, depending on what you're sawing, you can go through blades quite a bit. Now you can get blades sharpened probably about 12, 15 bucks a piece somewhere in there. Or you can buy brand new blades. Uh, Woodvisor has some that are like 14 bucks a blade depending on the length. And you could spend all the way up over $300 a blade depending on what brand you get, what quality you get. Uh, angles are very important, whether you're going to get a 7 degree, whether you're going to get a 10 degree. That all is important with what species you're cutting, the hardness of the wood, things like that. It's all things that you need to learn as you go. Like everything else in life, you will want to learn what works for you. So if you, uh, if you have a smorgasbord of different logs, different species, try to get an all-purpose blade. I, I believe I'm using uh, seven degree blades, I think. I want to say somewhere abouts in there. And they do pretty well. Not as good on the hardwoods, but they work phenomenal on the softwoods and they are passable on the hardwoods. What else do we have? Another con might be, depending on who you are, what type of person you are, some people glorify greasing fittings and maintaining equipment. I don't glorify it, but I don't mind doing it either. Uh, con, there is, if you want that mill to last you a long time, you have to pay attention to your maintenance on it. You have to keep it fairly clean, you have to keep it greased up, things like that. you got to make sure you take the tension off the blade every time you're not using it so you don't get to develop a flat spot in the band tires because that stuff can all get expensive to change. Now, and really the maintenance on this thing's not too bad. It's, well, it's four grease fittings. I slather a little grease here and there and some other stuff. Actually, it's six grease fittings. And that's it. Now, another thing to think about. It's not too bad. What else do I have? I'm going to pause this, make sure our focus is good. Let's see what develops. Basically, end of the day, a big pro is being able to mill your own lumber whenever you want. It's awful nice to have one sitting on your property. Even if you only use it once or twice a year, it's just so enjoyable. It's, it's very enjoyable. Now, you can if you live in an area where there's a lot of Amish, like I, there's a lot of Amish around here. A lot of them will have sawmills and you can take for really cheap, I'm talking maybe 20 cents a board foot, probably not even that. You can take logs to them and they will saw them for you. The problem with doing that sometimes is they don't always understand exactly what you want and sometimes they'll, <laughs> if their mill's off that day, they could ruin a lot of lumber on you. Don't ask me how I know, but I can tell you it can happen. Um, if their blades are dull, you get a lot of wavy lumber, just like anything else. You can get that on your own mill too, but sometimes it's just nice. If you have a good high dollar log and you want it milled up right, you kind of it's always better to do it yourself because for one, if you screw it up, you only have yourself to blame. You won't get anybody else mad at anybody else or anything like that. But um, I don't know. It's just a, for me, it's a very handy tool to have around. It, it really. This, this mill worked so hard when we built this barn here. We milled so many timbers on this thing. I mean, if you guys recall, some of those logs were absolute monsters. And this thing paid for itself in the course of this project and then some. I priced it out. I actually saved money milling my own timber. That was even after buying logs than I would have if I had gone to an Amish sawmill and bought it all. But you don't have to buy you don't have to buy a bandsaw mill to be able to mill your own lumber. If you have a chainsaw that's above 70 cc, now 70 cc is a little on the small end for chainsaw milling, but say that's all you have, then you could get yourself an Alaskan sawmill pretty cheap. You could buy one, I think, two, three hundred bucks. You could probably get a used one even cheaper. Because if you're anything like me <clears throat> and you use one after a while, you finally decide that you really love to mill lumber, mill lumber, but it's nice to not have all that labor to make your lumber. And there's a lot more waste with a chainsaw mill, but it's a good option if that's all you can afford. If you already have the saw, it's not a very big investment to get yourself the, uh, the Alaska mill for it. Ripping chain does not cost any more per drive length than regular crosscut chain. All it is is a different grind. The curve's just a touch thinner. And uh, so that's stuff you want to pay attention to if you're looking to get into the chainsaw milling. But to be honest with you, my experience with chainsaw milling is 
it is brutally hard on the chainsaw itself. If you have a chainsaw that you can't afford to replace, don't don't put it on an Alaskan sawmill. It, you will eventually wear that thing out much, much faster than if you're just doing cross cuts. Reason being is you're running that thing wide open for long periods of time. A lot of people aren't stopping, letting the saw air cool as it's running, as it's idling. Let that flywheel pull air in, run it through the saw. It's hard on the bearings. It's just chainsaw milling is extremely hard on a chainsaw. It's really hard on them, so it's something you really want to watch. You actually have to tune the saw a little bit different for running the chainsaw mill. You want it a little bit richer so you get a little more lubrication to the bearings, things like that. It's hard on your bars if you get a good three foot bar, anything like that. It's, it's much harder on the bar. It's harder on everything with a chainsaw mill, but if it's all you have and it's all you can use and you just want to make some boards here and there, there's nothing wrong with it. It's very nice to be able to go into the woods find something down and just turn it into boards right there so much easier to carry everything in and out but uh, traffic tonight lots of traffic wonder if it's done yet so anyway that's pretty much our talking video um, more, I, I kind of really wanted to try this new lens out, see how it worked out. We did the entire video tonight with this lens. It's definitely going to have some limitations. It has its place. It's supposed to be good for low light, so we'll really see how that turned out in editing. It's hard to tell on the camera screen, but uh, hopefully everything worked out. And if it did, awesome. But I know it'll be really good for close-up stuff when we're in the wood shop and we want to show a little more detail than the kit lens that's on there. As we go, we're always trying to up our game a little bit, always trying to make things a little more, a little bit higher production value, so that's the reason for things like that. Plus, it's a tax write-off, which is kind of handy. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know it kind of seemed like it was probably all over the place, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.